It comes to endpoints, I mean, XDR, there's been a lot of security vendors have been talking about XDR actually. So why is XDR becoming important for, uh, an important factor in cybersecurity? And, and what makes uh, VMware's approach to, towards XDR uh, different compared to other, other, other solutions out there? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, uh, I'll give you my opinion because when there's sure. ever a hot category, every, you know, it becomes a marketing term that everyone yeah. you know, uh, makes it their own meaning. But uh, to, to me, this is really ultimately about security incident detection and response. And again, the nature of security incident detection response is, first of all, I'm dealing with something by definition, my hardening couldn't disrupt and prevention can't disrupt. So I need things that detect the kinds of things you can't just prevent. And that you that often is not a bunch of known malware, it's often a manual attack, it's often non-malware stuff like living off the land, you know, using PowerShell to scrape an LSAS directory. Detecting that kind of thing is looking at the actual activity and the behavior. And then I want to be able to, as I was mentioning earlier, I need to be able to find quickly everywhere that's happening. I need to rewind the cameras to understand the causal chain of where the attacker started, where they are, where they've gone. So I understand the extent of the, of the attack. The traditional approach to this of using event correlation, looking at all the alerts from the security products that didn't catch it, that somehow I'm gonna take those clues together. It, 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 never, quite, it never quite solved that problem, right? We, it was useful for compliance, it was useful for log management. That's what caused the EDR market to even exist. It was, all right, now I have the actual data. Now I can rewind this. Now, we've seen other categories like network detection and response. And we made an acquisition earlier this year of a company called Lastline. We've seen user behavioral analytics. Connecting the dots between these is valuable. And the analogy I would give, Aaron, is um, uh, think of EDR as a camera on all the rooms and I can see suspicious activity in a room and I can tell me, show me all the rooms where this is happening, rewind the cameras to see what occurred. And now I want the cameras on the hallways. Like how did they get to the room? What was the path they took from the room? And now I want the camera on the, on the code on the door. I wanna know what credential they're using to get into the rooms. And I wanna connect these, these aren't isolated things. They went down this hall, they punched in this code, they got in the room, this is what they did. They left the room, they went somewhere else. XDR in my mind is about connecting, it's expanding the sources of telemetry of that picture and the sources of enforcement. Now this can have very practical, um, uh, I'll give you some practical examples, some technical examples, maybe before I do, is that, I guess the two things I can elaborate on is what are we doing and what's different about what we're doing. And I can also give more practical examples of what this means, but. I don't want to be long-winded, so I have, you can direct me as what's most no useful. Problem. You can just carry on. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, um, you know, you know, to, to give you an example of where these are useful, right? Uh, let, let me take a, a, a case of uh, network view and a workload view. I see some connections between machines over a network in the data center or in the cloud. Is it good or is it bad? Well, the network view might say, I want to analyze the protocols. I might want to, I want to look at a baseline of what happens across the network. But if you picture marrying that with, can you tell me what process on that workload was talking? And if you look at all the other workloads that also have that same stack and are exist in a similar topology, do I normally see that, um, that process talk on that? You marry those views and it starts to have a much clearer picture of whether this is good or bad than viewing just on a network view. Now we'll flip it around and take the response. When you do quarantine on a user machine, you often are doing things like block all communications except to the patch server. But when you think of a workload, 
that might be a database as part of a patient care system, some mission critical system in a hospital, that can have devastating consequences on a lot of other machines like that are dependent on having that exist there. So what you would probably do realistically is say, I don't want to, I might detect it on the workload, but I might want to respond on the network to load balance the asset to create other kind of filtering. Our approach to XDR is, it, it is quite expensive. It's not thinking about it just as a product. Um, some of it is about the XDR enabled cloud. So if you think of carbon black cloud and the analytics that we've created, you think of that expanding to start taking into account identity, endpoint, workload, and network, and sort of thinking of those much more holistically. And some of that we've done already, like for example, Carbon Black Cloud can trigger access control mechanisms in, through Workspace ONE. And some of them we will still, you'll see us build out in the coming quarters and, and years. The second part of, the of this is the threat intelligence team. We have been combining the threat research teams from Carbon Black, from Last Line, and building out with other expertise, we want threat researchers that think about things from an endpoint view, from a workload view, from a network view, from an, and to be collaborating so that we can understand threats and express threats in multiple dimensions. It, it, it expands the, the language that they have to be able to see it. The third is what we're calling XDR enabled controls. Think of the service defined firewall that's part of NSX. Um, it's about not just making that work with the cloud, but also being able to make use of context from other domains, make use of identity information, make use of workload information. And, and actually, we have some of that today, right? The, the service defined firewall in NSX can take advantage of identity so that you can have policies like a segment around some virtual desktops and if it's a contractor logging in, they can only, their traffic can only go to certain places, right? Uh, or workload context. The fourth leg of this is um, what we're calling XDR enabled infrastructure. And that's taking this where you're, we have infrastructure like the VMware Cloud Foundation, right? Which is virtual compute network and storage and management, basically create a private cloud out of your data center hardware. We're building into that all the instrumentation for XDR so that earlier this month we launched uh, an advanced security suite for VMware Cloud Foundation. It includes Carbon Black and it includes things like the NSX IDS uh, and network detection and response. And there's no agents, there's no appliances, it's using vSphere, it's using, uh, it's using the virtual switch. The last uh, uh, piece of it is the ecosystem and where what we're doing to partner, fitting into the SEMs and the SOARs so that we have deeper integration with them, but also integration with other types of controls, email, uh, other types of controls in other domains. And it's about how these are coming together. So this to us is a, it, it, we will have products and offerings on it, but it's a, in many ways, it's a bit more of a philosophy to say, we have to connect the dots. Mm -hmm.